so hi uh good evening everyone uh, let me share my screen first i hope screen is visible to you all guys so welcome to networkings and today we are going to start our course for f5 and my name is nishant kumar and i will be your instructor for this class so in terms of experience i have total 8 years of experience for especially in f5 so in this course uh, we'll go through very basics to the advanced level so uh, in this course if we go to the course content so we will discuss about f5 why we use f5 and what is the requirement of it we will discuss about the product line so how many variant we have our f5 especially in hardware virtual or the cloud and we have uh, different types of module available in the market for f5 so we will understand each and every module of f5 especially in ltm gtm asm apm so we'll discuss all these things we'll go through the f5 architecture how the traffic is being flowed and what is the architecture of f5 and we'll start about f5 how it is being started through a serial cable or the management cable so we will go step by step how we are going to start like we will start from the very scratch level then how we can deploy our f5 so there are several methods how we can deploy our f5 and all about the licensing so that come under how we can you know install the licenses and we can set up those things how can we configure the vlans network management ips so how we will provision our big ip basically so we will discuss this thing in the course and obviously our traffic flow how the traffic is being ingressed to our f5 and how the traffic is being flow through the different modules and how what things we will cover in this traffic flow and obviously backup and storage of f5 so there are a several method of taking a backup and if your device unfortunately your device get logged and how you will take a uh you know a storage of this and renew this your same back f5 device so we will discuss about all these things they are few terminology what is a node what is a pool and how we create those things we have virtual ips vip that is called so we will understand and see how we can create those things we have different types of load balancing methods so we have some static load balancing some dynamic load balancing we'll go through each and every load balancing method and there are some health monitors so health monitor are basically used to check the health of the back end servers where the actual services are running and how our f5 is being tracked those servers if they are active or not if it is the right way to send the traffic either that can be a down or that will be a up so health monitor is that mechanism to check those things over the f5 and the back end servers and we have a different types of profiles so profiles are nothing but it, these are used to manipulate the customer traffic and those have a different variant so we'll go through each and everything about the profiles and next is a netting so what is a net so we have in f5 we have also a different types of net like snet automap and how we will use those things and what are the advantage to using those netting in our f5 and we will go some advanced level like i rule 
i rule is nothing but it is a scripting so you can obviously this is used to manipulate the customer traffic but there are many features they are all very advanced level things so we will discuss the i rule as well in this course and the high availability high availability are basically used for the redundancy purposes so if we we will use our devices in a redundant way where one device goes down so other can take a place and we don't see any interruption in our network as you guys will be uh, from the network background so you are much aware about this term high availability then at end we will understand how the we can do the troubleshooting how we can take a logs and we can see the like they there are few terms which are new for you guys called as a tcp dump or qkv files but these files are used for the troubleshooting purpose so we'll go through each and every steps right and in this course we have we will be providing labs so if i show you the labs so we have labs here in our course so we have two types of labs here for one is used for ha and second one is used for a stand alone so these are the labs each and every user have a separate credential for labs so they can try and they can use for it right so but uh, before we start let's understand why we need f5 and what is the use of it f5 as a called as a load balancer in earlier days when we don't have a load balancer how the traffic is being flown so suppose this is your client and this is your server and the connectivity is between here and your actual application suppose you have one application is called xyz.com and user is trying to access this applications what if if that server goes down then what will happen obviously this application will be run on a different server as well so client has to move their connection from server 1 to server 2 for the moment of these there must be a downtime that when the client will connect from server 1 to server 2 there will be a outage and in our environment we don't get those uh, basically outages it is a live environment so we don't want any interruption for the customer perspective services will be available 24 cross 7 to 65 days 365 days so this is the first reason why we need a load balancer if we have a load balancer we can load the balance between the different servers so this is the first reason load balance between the servers right now second reason is application is running on this server server 1 and suppose you have thousands of users to try accessing this applications as i'm i'm supposing you you guys must have a knowledge about basic networking so if 
you guys are aware there are four terms when the traffic is being traveled in the network so one is source ip second one is source port third one is destination ip and fourth one is destination port what if we have thousands of connection for this application as we have limited ports available in the market 65535 we don't have more than those ports and in those ports we have some limited ports are reserved for some applications so if we talk about http https 443 port is reserved http 80 port is reserved so suppose we have 64 ports are available and for the our application more than 64k connections are coming so till 64000 things are okay client will be able to access his application but what else if we have more than connections suppose we have 67k connection at one time so 64 will get a port but for six for three connections definitely they will get dropped because we have a limited port numbers available so to reduce those things f5 came with its idea he has a different modules called ltm gtm apm asm but but in this course we'll discuss more about ltm so f5 come into picture with this module called as a local traffic manager now how ltm changed the way to access the applications so today is the demo class so we will only discuss about those load balancing method from tomorrow we'll start from the very beginning so today is a demo class so just giving you idea about it so f5 primarily job is to load balance the traffic now f5 will sit between your client and your servers This is your client and this is your server. Suppose server, we have multiple servers. Server two. server 3 and all the servers have this application is running xyz.com okay now how the behavior behavior will change 
to come into the fi come into the picture so whenever any client will try to access his application so what fi will say fi will say that you need to access me i will give you one ip where you will try to access this one if you want to go to your applications xyz.com i'm giving you one ip that is 10.1.1 you don't worry about the servers we have a connections so whenever you want to try to access this application just try to access this application now if the server goes down f5 has some mechanism then whenever this server goes down it will not send the traffic to this server f5 will not send this traffic to this servers only available server will get the traffic server 2 and server 3 once this server will be available f5 will get to know that this is available now and i can send the traffic to this server this is all about f5 f5 has a mechanism it will identify the servers whatever the servers are connected so it reduce one problem what was the one problem availability of application or server it doesn't matter if server is up or not if that server is down f5 will not send the traffic and we will see the continuity in our application application will be available so this is the first issue what f5 resolve second is more number of connection now f5 will always load balance the traffic between the servers it has some mechanism how although how we will set those things it's up to us as well what kind of load balancing we are setting here we have how many servers we have and what are the load balancing method we are setting up here so it whenever the request will come it will send this request to server 1 it will send request to server 3 it will send request to server 2 whatever be the suppose we have a access connections we have more than access 65k connections at one time no problem f5 has some ips or some netting configurations where it can accept it can accept more than 65k connections because at one ip at one ip it can take 65 connection if we talk about the connections one ip can take multiple connection 
one ip can take 65 key connection but f5 have a different ips a list of number of ips we can set so that issue cannot be come when we have a f5 but if we want let's suppose we have a more than 65k connections here on server 1 so f5 will check whether this server will be able to take the connection or not if it is not able to take the next connection f5 will not send the traffic to server 1 it will grade out from the cluster until unless connections are normal on the servers and it is ready to take a new connection so this is how your f5 resolve those issue right okay load balancing method This is your F5 LTM. We have different servers for one application. And client are taking those connection. This is your client. This is your F5, and these are your three different servers. Server one, server two, and server three. For this application, application is xyz.com. We have three different servers, and those are bind with your f5 all right so how your f5 send those traffic to your backend server and what is the method to send those the traffic is to send those backend servers we have in this case we have three servers but we can have a four server as well so what is the approach to send the traffic towards the backend server that is based on your load balancing method in f5 we have two types of load balancing method one is static load balancing method Second is dynamic load balancing method. Now first understand these two terminology. What is a static and what is a dynamic? As you guys are from network background, so you know about the static route and the dynamic route. A static route what a static route says 
suppose this is your route of one router one router two router three and router four and you have connectivity between those routers now this is kind of your source and this is <coughs> your destination suppose you want to go from router a to router sorry router 1 to router 4 and you have a different route to reach to this route router 4 what static route says static route are you manually tell to the router to reach from source to destination either you take this route or you take this route manually you are telling to the router that you should follow this route router a to router 2 and to the router 4 because it has multiple path cost metric whatever be the differences but the only thing and the main thing is you are telling that you should follow this route to reach from router one to router four whatever be the reason right this is how your static route says and your dynamic is you will run some routing protocol here like rep eigrp ospf right you will run these routing protocols to the all routers and whenever you want to go from source to destination it will check its own path what is the cost what is the matrix what is the ad value what has less ad value which route i should follow so it will calculate by itself by calculating those terms based on your routing protocol same theory come in f5 as well if you talk about the static load balancing method in static load balancing you are telling your f5 to follow this criteria first you should go to this second you should go to this if third request come you should go on server three if fourth request come you should go on server four so you are telling your router telling sorry telling your f5 to follow this criteria second one is dynamic dynamic lb method in dynamic lb method you just set one load balancing method here you have set it whatever be the load balancing method you have set it dynamic 
सो बेस्ड ऑन इट्स कैलकुलेशन एफ आई विल चेक इट्स पैरामीटर एंड सेंड द ट्राफिक बेस्ड ऑन द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ द बैक एंड सर्वर्स इट विल सेंड द ट्राफिक i hope this point is very much clear to you guys because this is the main theory to understand the load balancing method things are quite similar base base are the same for each device whether you are talking about the router or you are talking about the f5 base are same what static load balancing method do and how the load dynamic lb method or dynamic routes are being generated so f5 calculates its parameter and based on those values it send the traffic to the available server right so now understand about different types of load balancing method static and dynamic so let's first understand the static load balancing method in static load balancing we have two types one is round robin second one is ratio so what one so what two so what three so what four this is your f5 and request are coming now what happened to your f5 now you have set it a load balancing method as a round robin load balancing method round what round robin do whenever you set the round robin load balancing method and first request will come to your f5 it will pass this request to very first server then second request will come it will pass this request to server 2 when the third request come it will send to server 3 when fourth request will come it will send to server 2 number 2 request number 3 request number 4 request but whenever we have fifth request will come we have fifth request will come it will again go to server 1 sixth will come it will go to 
सर्वर टू सो लाइक अ राउंड रॉबिन वे फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्वर सेकेंड कम सेकेंड सर्वर हाउ मेनी सर्वर वी हैव इट लोड बैलेंस इट विल लोड बैलेंस द ट्राफिक बिटवीन दो सर्वर इन अ राउंड रॉबिन वे फर्स्ट रिक्वेस्ट विल कम इट विल गो टू सर्वर वन सेकेंड रिक्वेस्ट विल कम सर्वर टू थर्ड रिक्वेस्ट थर्ड सर्वर लेट सपोज इन दिस सीन वी हैव सर्वर थ्री अन अवेलेबल सर्वर थ्री इट्स डाउन सो एफ फाइव हैज सम मैकेनिज्म टू चेक whether this server is up or down so the suppose this server is down so it will rolled out from its cluster whenever the request will come if the load balancing method is setted as a round robin first request will go to first server second will go to second server third will go to fourth server it will not send the traffic or request to the server 3 as it's already showing down whenever the server will be available and ready to take the connection it will send the request in the same round robin way the impact the method will not be changed it will start whenever it will see the server is okay and ready to take the connections right so if we check our ppt this is your round robin way you have client they those are coming through internet and coming to your fi as we have a four backend servers one request will come first request will come on first server second is coming to second server third is coming to third server fourth is coming to fourth server whenever the fifth request is coming it will again go to the server 5 then six will go to server 2 seven will go to server 3 eight will go to server 4 so this is how your round robin load balancing method works and don't forget the last and the main motive to have f5 in our environment is the availability of application whether this server is down it will not send the traffic to this server right so this is how your round robin load balancing method work second load static load balancing method is a ratio now how the ratio is work in f5 you setted up some ratio you have four servers and you have set some ratio as i'm repeating again this is a static load balancing so you are manually defining the terminology and the method what you need to take and how fi will take a decision based on whatever you are setting in your fi you are setting as a round robin it will follow the round robin way as you are setting some ratio so it will follow your ratio concept or ratio load balancing method so now you have four servers and you have set it up some ratio in ratio 4 ratio 
सपोज फोर रेशियो टू रेशियो वन रेशियो वन बेस्ड ऑन योर सर्वर कैपेबिलिटी यू हैव डिफाइन द रेशियो नाउ हाउ इट विल टेक एक्शन ऑन योर एफ आई सपोज फर्स्ट रिक्वेस्ट इज कमिंग इट विल गो टू सर्वर वन सेकेंड रिक्वेस्ट इज कमिंग इट इज गोइंग टू सर्वर टू थर्ड रिक्वेस्ट इज कमिंग इट विल गो टू सर्वर थ्री फोर्थ रिक्वेस्ट इट विल गो टू सर्वर फोर नाउ गिवे वन मिनट नौ फिफ्थ रिक्वेस्ट इज कमिंग फिफ्थ रिक्वेस्ट will go to server 1 or let's do in that way fifth request will go to server 1 now sixth request is coming sixth request is going to server 2 what if when seventh request will come ideally it should go to server 3 but in this case it will not go as we have defined the ratio in 4 ratio 2 ratio 1 ratio 1 absolutely it will go to server 1 only so fifth request will go to server 1 sixth request will go to server 2 seventh request will go to server 1 when the eight request came again eight request will also go to the server 1 only so this is how you have set it up your ratio this server might be more capable to handle the request among these servers he has some high cpu and memory so what you are telling to your fi out of eight request four should be go to server one as this server is more capable than other three servers so this is your ratio looks like or work basically if we follow our ppt c in this diagram we have set it up a ratio 3 ratio 2 ratio 1 ratio 1 we have again four servers first request is coming it will go to server 1 so second server 2 third is server 3 fourth is server 4 fifth will go to server 1 as we have 3 ratio 2 ratio 1 ratio 1 sixth again it will go to server 2 but seventh instead of going to server 3 it will go to server 1 right okay. so this this is how your static load balancing works now let's discuss about dynamic load balancing method
so as we have few flavors in static load balancing in dynamic we have few flavor as well we have a least connection we have fastest third one is objective fourth one is predictive let's understand these four types as well first is least connection as it is a dynamic load balancing method so we will not do anything in this scenario we will not set up like first request will go to server 1 second request will go to server 2 third request will go to server 3 in this case it will not happen like that server will understand each and everything about and take a decision based on it how let's see it in whenever we set as a least connection we have set it up as a least connection what fi will do fi will check how many connections are currently on these servers and calculate those things whenever it check it has 78 active connection on server 1 it has 85 connections currently and it has 60 connection if i will check by its own parameters on how many connection i have on those back end servers so whenever the request will come if i will see who has the least connection the server who is having the least connection will get the next request when the first request will come it will go to the server 3 now after getting this request server how many connection has 61 still less than these two servers so whenever the next request will come it will again go to server 3 now 62 very request will come it will come to server 3 only so all the request will come until and unless connection will be higher than these values once we have these values 79 the next request will come as to the server 1 so we are not putting any value you we are not taking any decision f5 calculates its amajhar uh, can you please turn off your camera so f5 is taking its own decision by calculating the active connections this is how your dynamic load balancing method works so f5 has its own value has own criteria based on that it is taking the decisions so 
yes that is a genuine question what if when we have a equal connection now suppose we have 78 connections here and 78 connections are here so we don't have any foundation either request can go to server one or server three request will not go to server two it can go to any of the server that is not defined if i based it will take a decision but if if we have 77 connection here is there anyone suppose currently we have 77 connections and this server one has 78 now the request will come to server 3 and now server 3 has 78 connections whenever the next request will come ideally it should come to server 3 only the reason is cache cache memory so it will based on some persistence cache it will reach to the server 3 only right so we don't have any foundation any document that request will go to server 3 only request can go to any of the server either server 1 or server 3 second dynamic load balancing is fastest so whenever any request will come to F5. F5 will send some kind of string to all three backend servers. It will send some strings or request to its backend servers. And whoever the server will send the request in the fastest manner will get the request we say we got first request whenever it request came if i send some kind of request to all these servers and suppose server 2 respond first among these three servers so the first request will go to server two only when the next request will come again it will send those queries or send those string to all these servers and whosoever server will respond first will get the request but ideally or we can say in live environment these methods are not actually applicable because they increase the utilization of your f5 as well as your backend servers so this is not the good practice to have these kind of load balancing method in your live environment either we will go least connection wise or a round robin way i also ratio is not also preferable because we 
want load balancing because all the servers has the same capability right we have two other method as well objective and predictive objective is nothing but it is a combination of least connection plus fastest so it will check if i will check the connections as well as server response the server who has less connection and respond fastly will get the request this is your objective load balancing method last one is predictive predictive is also like a same is like a objective lb method it has some extra thing is like is go with the trends as well what do you understand by trend so trend is nothing but suppose this is your server your all three servers and you know this server is has least connection plus it is a fastest and go with the trends like it this server mostly use in ist zone indian time zone so after 6:30 the connections are getting dropped because the we have less number of clients available for this application so this server will respond fastly after 6:30 so that also go with the trends as well although things are quite similar like a objective and as i also mentioned that these methods are not used in live environment and these are not the in the best practice to use in live environment right least connection c we have 5459 460 461 and 471 462 462 462 first request will come to this now it come to 460 we have 460 and 460 ideally it should come to second request should come to uh, it can go either way because both have 460 but due to some cache and things already connection is there it is again go to server one third request now it has 461 it has 460 and 461 third request will go to this server right how your least connection work same like the next request as well so this is all about your load balancing methods as as i mentioned this is a demo class so i just show you how the things work in terms of load balancing and from tomorrow we'll start our course from very beginning anyone has any doubt so we can discuss else we are, are good to close for today's sessions actually i have one question yeah please 
uh, you talk about the past tense objective and predictive connection uh, the mode of the dynamic load balancing uh, uh dhruv it will be great if you can speak a bit louder uh, you talk about the three dynamic uh, load balancing method which are past tense objective and predictive right? yeah yeah so these are completely wiped out from life scenario or they are still using in uh, still are used in life scenarios so dhruv as i mentioned earlier so these methods are still available in your fi boxes you can use it but these are not the best practice to use in a live environment because they increase the utilization of your device as well as your back end servers okay as i worked in fi from last 8 years so i have checked or seen only two methods one is least connection and second one is round robin even though i have no seen the ratio or the fastest or predictive objective i don't see those load balancing method in life scenarios or the live environment but yes we should know how they can be used right we should have an idea that this load balancing has these criteria and they, for load balancing perspective these are the algorithm which is used to send the traffic towards the back end servers okay thank you So uh, I think we are uh, 